Hey, what's up everyone? This is Snicked back with the next installment in a series of Royal Revolt 2 base reviews. Uh, today we're going to be looking at Yusuf 12, uh, 1100 trophy base. Uh, this is the base of Mode Yusuf Mustafa, who is uh, also an active member of the Facebook group of which I'm a part. And uh, Mode is a, uh, a relatively new Royal Revolt 2 player. Uh, and he's very inquisitive and uh, very interested in learning how he can progress and coming up with uh, with ways to progress through the game. And so, uh, hopefully, this video will be will be beneficial for him and uh, give him uh, a few ideas on things that he's doing right, but also ways to improve. So, um, what we're going to go ahead and do here before we get into the raid proper is just take a, a very brief look at what I'm going to be bringing to the raid uh, because this is quite a bit different for me in that I'm using a, uh, a vastly overpowered uh, a vastly overpowered hero to attack this base. But uh, I, I think that that will give us the luxury of some time to be able to work through the base um, slowly, and, uh, and we'll, we'll get some good comments in there about tactics and different considerations for, for use of layout. So I'm um, looking at what I'm going to be using. Uh, these are throwbacks because I haven't used any of these in quite some time. Uh, the first one is Hammer Strike, and Hammer Strike is the uh, the, the first you know, the go to spell that everyone unlocks in the game. Uh, at seven seconds, it has you know uh, upwards of of twenty cooldowns that can be used, so it can be used fairly consistently as you progress through the base. Uh, it's great for um, taking down just about anything. Secondly, I'm going to be using Toxic Cloud. Toxic Cloud later in the game, once you get into mid level gameplay, is completely displaced and made obsolete by Sword Rain, which is superior to it as a purpose-built crowd control or troop control spell. Uh, but at this point, individuals that are at a level with Yusuf, which is probably right around a level 35 to level 40 hero, uh, the only uh, purpose-built spell that they have for taking on waves or taking on troops is Toxic Cloud. And that has a tiny range at 2.4, it's a dot spell or a damage over time spell, so it does it does deal out its damage over time. That can be a benefit because it can actually uh, end up touching more troops than uh, the instant damage of Sword Rain can, depending on how you place it. But um, because of its small range, it can't reach across barriers and into parallel paths the way that Sword Rain can, and that's where it really falters a little bit later in the game. So we'll see how that works out in practice in just a moment. And also, lastly, Firestorm. And Firestorm is a spell that right now in the uh, in the spell progression or the upgrade progression of the Mage Tower is probably a spell that Yusuf has just unlocked or is a spell that some um, of the individuals that are, are at his level, again, right around a level 35 or a level 40 hero, are probably unlocking. So at this point, Firestorm is the, the, is the best, most destructive spell in the game, certainly better than Toxic Cloud and definitely uh, even better than Hammer Strike, although they do have their own purposes. But um, a lot of individuals at, at Yusuf's level will be using Firestorm, so we're going to have a look here, even though mine's insanely overpowered for this base, we're going to have a look and just consider in principle how susceptible his base may be to fire damage because the novelty of the spell, and a lot of people have probably been looking forward to upgrading and getting this spell, so most Individuals that will be raiding Yusuf at his level are going to have this in their spell toolkit. So we want to see uh, how well his base is suited toward defending against Firestorm. And then uh, as far as troops, I'm just going to bring uh, I'm going to bring knights and archers and paladins, which are um, the uh, which is is probably the setup. Maybe maybe frosters instead of of one of the melee troops, but it's probably the the setup that most individuals that are at Yusuf's level are raiding with. All of these are, are um, well, the uh, the archers are at level 7, the knights and the paladins are maxed out. So again, the, the, it's it's really overpowered, but just doing what I can to uh, to simulate a raider at his level uh, as much as I can. So looking at Yusuf's base, uh, there's a lot I could say here. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to have to um, to keep my comments brief. But um, we do have what's called a stacked or a snake base design. I've also seen it called an intestine <laughs> Um, but uh, all of those names are pretty apt for what's going on here. So what happens is you have um, a series of, of really sharp turns. You have two major, actually three major hairpin turns or 180 degree turns. 
Uh, and what ends up happening there is it has the effect of stacking parallel paths or parallel portions of the overall path on top of one another. So you have this really tight-knit, kind of congested layout design, uh, which does have its benefits, especially at this level of play. Um, I am a fan of it at this point in gameplay. Later on, it'll actually become somewhat obsolete and more of a liability. It's not an ideal base design once you get into mid to high level gameplay uh, for a few different reasons. But, uh, but at this point, it's actually, it actually can fare pretty well. Um, and the principal reason for that is that the ranged DPS or the ranged waves that are coming down out of the, uh, of the base itself can shoot across the, uh, the barriers between these parallel paths and, uh, and attack the oncoming hero and the oncoming units relatively unopposed um, because uh, Toxic Cloud's low, low range at 2.4 can't really stretch effectively across those barriers uh, to attack the uh, to attack the the ranged DPS that's that's attacking you as the raider, and so that's where this base design really shines. Once sword rain comes on, it becomes a balancing act because it's a matter of whether or not the uh, the waves the the ranged DPS in the the defender's waves is strong enough to outlast or has enough health to outlast uh, the uh, the raider's sword rain. And there, there comes a point right around sword rain level 7 where this uh, the sword rain is going to one-shot pyromancers and arblasters, and certainly archers. And so it becomes a, a big liability at that point, and that's where the use of this, this base design really begins to phase out. All right, so looking, at, uh, looking very quickly at... Um, some of the defensive structures in terms of the towers and uh, and the barriers. Uh, we have all froster towers here. The reason for that is probably because in the uh, in the inventor's workshop progression that Yusuf is working through here in early level gameplay, this is the latest and greatest tower uh, that has become available. So the idea may be that um, that because it's the latest and it's the most advanced in the progression that it's the best and that actually couldn't be further from the truth because without getting into all the niceties the froster tower or the, the ice tower is the most useless tower in the game uh, and in short that's because of it does minimal splash damage the ice damage that it does is is next to nothing it really the slow effect that the froster tower uh, generates to slow down the uh, the, the hero and the raid doesn't seem to be all that effective. Certainly not as effective as as a, what a froster deals out. And uh, again, it, it it has hardly any range whatsoever, and so it can't shoot across any of these barriers or across any of these corners. Um, and it's very easy to take down with firestorm. And so uh, that uh, there's probably five or six uh, froster towers here, just judging by its placement in the overview. And so we're going to want. I can tell you right from the outset uh, mode that you're going to want to replace probably three or four, uh, just uh, whittle down the number of Froster Towers you have to one or two, maybe even get rid of them entirely, frankly, because you're not going to be using them uh, probably uh, 10 levels from now at all. And so there's really not a whole lot of point in investing your hard-earned gold into upgrading those that can be better spent elsewhere. What I would do is actually replace those with Bomb Towers and Archer Towers, which aren't featured very heavily here uh, and actually need to be bumped up pretty considerably. Um, and then... Also, uh, another, a couple other things that stand out before we get into the raid are um, barriers. So you have blockade, a blockade, and then you have five spikes, uh, and that's that's interesting. I would like to hear your your thinking behind about behind how tactically that that has some benefit because I'm not discounting that it does. But what I would say here is that on on the blockade, you only have one, and um, and I would I would advise probably getting, um, actually bringing out more barricades because barricades are, are much cheaper than blockades and their upgrade cycle takes a lot less time. And so you can actually level up your barricades relatively inexpensively and much faster than you can the blockades, especially with the gold that you're getting at, at the level that you're at. And, um, and the number of spikes is five. And so spikes at this point do have the effect of slowing the hero down to take care of them before he progresses. And also, uh, there's the incentive to destroy them because uh, because spikes are really devastating to knights. And so, um, if you're if you have a lot of knights that uh, that a hero is is bringing into the raid, then spikes are gonna are gonna deal out a lot of damage. But spikes 
um, the, so they do have the effect of slowing down a little bit, but very soon these spikes are, are going to become relatively obsolete, and um, and people are going to just start marching right through your base virtually unopposed. And so I would, uh, just in short, I would get rid of at least three of the spike pads that you have out here and replace them with barricades. I also wouldn't have, uh, I wouldn't replace them just right in place. I would spread your barricades out. You have none after the first 90 degree turn there, and so, uh, or in the parallel path that's on top of that. So I would actually put at least one barricade uh, right after your first 90 degree turn. You could probably stand to put a barricade as well up above um, up above kind of the congested area that's the that's the, the bulk of your design there because once people get past that second dual spike pad area it's it's a completely unopposed run all the way up to the gate. Um, so yes, so I would I would bring your blockades out or barricades out of storage if you have any um, and replace three of your uh, three of your spikes with that. You might even consider you can leave your blockade in place um, but if you have a barricade to replace that, I would probably hold on to my barricades a little bit longer uh, and uh, because again the upgrade cycle is going to be much less expensive and they're going to be a lot more effective for you until you get into mid-level gameplay proper where you'll want to start the uh, the blockade upgrade cycle instead. And then right before we get into the base, I do want to do want to note there is a huge omission up here in the wave composition, which is uh, archers. There aren't any archers whatsoever, and so the ranged DPS that you'd like to generate across these barriers on these parallel paths, which is again the signature element of this of this stacked or the snake design, is pretty much non-existent or is entirely nullified by the fact that you don't have any ranged DPS. We talked about frost damage. Uh, the benefit of having frosters in your waves is that it does slow down the raider and it does slow down the progression. I am a big fan of having it having one froster per wave, but um, I, I'm I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that you probably have at least two, and so the effect ends up becoming somewhat redundant because the the ice damage or the slow damage or the slow effect that's put on the hero and on the troops doesn't stack, and so I would. Get rid of one Froster per wave if you have more than one. Replace that with an Archer and probably another Knight. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into the, the raid itself here. And I'll try to take my time. And I'm actually just going to work through it with the hero. I'm not going to bring out any any troops. And we'll concentrate more on, on spells. So uh, a Bomb Tower there and we have a Hammer Strike. There's an Arrow Tower that's across from here, as, they, as you can see, that I can't get. Even... Uh, even my firestorm there and my uh, and my hammer strike uh, hit that pad, but it didn't attack the arrow tower. I would replace that with a bomb tower instead, just because the splash damage that the bombs deal out is going to be. I oops, I brought out some troops. Force of habit <laughs> um, is going to be a lot more effective. Uh, so replace that with a bomb tower. Here we are at this first pad. Um, it does slow down slow down the hero. Um, but a hammer strike is going to take care of that, or even a firestorm is going to take care of that relatively easily. And once I get in the middle, oh, I didn't have time, but once you get in the middle of those, those dual spike pads like that, um, a hammer strike or a firestorm is going to do make really short work of them. Here in this corner, we have an arrow tower and then two froster towers. You've really clustered up your, uh, your towers there, which can seem like a good idea, but as you just saw there, um, a, a spell or two, uh, even at level, uh, a firestorm especially, because all of those are especially susceptible to firestorm, is going to take out that entire corner relatively easily. So you want to spread your towers out much more than they were right there. So there's another bomb tower. Uh, here's a wave with all paladins. That's good as far as slowing things down. Um, but I would actually suggest probably including a froster there. Alright, and as we get up here, uh, so we have a, another bomb tower. So not as many froster towers as I as I thought there would be, just based off of uh, what I saw there. Two frosters again. Get rid of the uh, the second froster in your units and replace it with an archer and a knight and then an arrow tower. So so all in all, pretty pretty uh, pretty good. Um, with the exception of the few things that I mentioned there. And uh, we didn't really really use toxic cloud a whole lot. Um, Okay, and I only had 10 seconds left, so so there you go. So uh, a decent amount of DPS actually um, uh, for 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 what we have for 
for the base as is. Uh, I would go, just go ahead and take into account the suggestions that I mentioned. And uh, if you have any questions or concerns, definitely let me know in the comments below. Thanks.